Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar on idea ads. You can see lots of people in the chat from all different places, which is so exciting. And I also agree, very good music to start us off. Um, well, we're so excited to have you all here today to learn about idea ads. Um, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about how there's a new way to inspire here at Pinterest. With this new, inspiring, immersive storytelling experience, in a place that where the world comes to turn inspiration into realization. Uh, before we kick off, I actually wanted to introduce the team here uh, who's here today to present. So first off, my name is Kat Vassilopoulos. My pronouns are she, her, and I lead our creator monetization product marketing team here at Pinterest. Sorry, I keep looking at him like amazed at all the people from different places, so cool. Um, so what's inspiring me lately? Well, I've been really into home design recently. Um, I'm especially liking the combination of Japanese and Scandinavian design, which is sometimes called Japandi. The style really focuses on minimalistic designs that are very aesthetically pleasing, but highly functional, which is very important to me. So think things like natural materials, muted colors, clean lines, and minimal well-curated furnishings not sparse, it's intentional. I recommend checking out the creator, uh, La Rue du Pommier, to get inspired. So I'm very into that. How about you, Amy? Thanks, Kat. And hi, everyone. My name is Amy Ranser. My pronouns are she and her. And I am a creative strategy lead here at Pinterest. And what's inspiring me lately is colorful and bold style, as you can kind of see. A bit of dopamine dressing, which is also a Pinterest predicts trend. And I just did a cross country move from San Francisco to New York, and I'm just so inspired by the street style in New York City. So I've been trying to find looks that will make a statement. And a creator that I'm loving and have loved for a long time is Blair Edie, AKA Atlantic Pacific. That's a throwback for a lot of us. Um, she's been a creator for a long time, but has always just evolved her content so much in the last several years. And I'm just always inspired by her style, her flair for pattern mixing, and of course, bold colors. So that's what I've been searching and saving for. What about you, Leanne? Thanks, Amy, and hello, everyone. My name is Leanne. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a creative strategist here at Pinterest as well. And what's inspiring me lately is bridal couture. I'm currently planning my wedding, and I want to wear something that's really untraditional, that will turn heads, but also be comfortable, because I really am all about comfort, no matter what the occasion is. Um, a creator that I'm in loving right now is uh, Makeup by Tammy, because I'm still undecided with what I want to do with my face. And she has so many amazing beauty looks to get inspired with. And with that, I'll pass it back to Kat. Amazing. Uh, I love the different inspiration everyone has. So before we dive into the content for today, I thought we could just go through a quick agenda of what we're going to cover. So we'll kick off the session with a brief, brief overview of why idea ads matter, what they are, and how um, they can be used in your overall marketing strategy. Then we'll share the ins and outs of the format itself, what it is, where it shows up on the platform and where to create them. And then we'll showcase the versatility of idea ads by showing you how brands are using them today before we dive into creative best practices. And then finally, we'll end with adapting vertical video for Pinterest, which will cover uh, best practices for repurposing video content from other platforms. But to get you all extra hyped, let's play our sizzle video.
amazing. Okay, I hope you are like buzzing like me. I'm currently on the West Coast and it's about seven o'clock in the morning, but I am bopping around to that beat. Um, and there's good reason to bop. Today, over 400 million people all over the world use Pinterest every month because we're a more inspiring, more positive place on the internet. People come to Pinterest to find, try, and buy great ideas, whether it's their next meal, their next trip, their next home, or their next business idea. They aren't here to sit back and be passively entertained. They're here to discover and act. People come here in a state of mind that's really different from anywhere else. They come open-minded and really ready to discover. And like we talked about, they come with an intent to do or even buy before they know exactly what they want. And they come here very early in their decision-making journey when they're still browsing, browsing and really visually ideating on what they truly are looking for. Even for myself, when I go to Pinterest, sometimes I'm looking for a new nail design that I wanna try out for a summer trip or a new hairstyle for a wedding I have, or maybe just like a refresh on my fashion with people who have my body shape. I don't know just yet what I'm looking for, but I'm very open to discover. And I just know when I find exactly what I really did want to find that I just couldn't quite articulate. And that's why brands on Pinterest, they don't interrupt, they actually really spark inspiration. We found that 80% of weekly Pinterest users have discovered a new brand or product on Pinterest. Brands provide that solution and spark that your audience needs to, to decide what to do and try next. And that's where idea ads come in. Idea ads are made for inspiration. They're made for storytelling in a visually compelling, immersive way. Our pinners are craving that inspiration. We talked about how they want to try, do, and learn, and make so much more. And idea ads help you as a brand to be that spark of inspiration for them. So what are idea ads? Well, hopefully you're familiar with idea pins, which is a native way to create on Pinterest. And if you're familiar with idea pins, well, idea ads are um, the version of a promoted version that are created uh, by a brand like you. They are an immersive multi-page format designed to showcase ideas in action with all the inspiration and information needed to bring it to life. Audiences can view your inspiring content, visit your site, and get the step-by-step -step breakdown all within the ad. And you as a brand can develop your own inspiring content native on Pinterest to spark that inspiration, drive results, and promote it to an audience that is positive and prime for action because we believe that your brand deserves so much more than just to double tap. Idea ads give you that canvas to bring your brand to life with a captivating storytelling format in our full screen and grid. You can drive awareness of your brand by scaling your inspiring content across a community built around great ideas. We found that campaigns that feature idea ads actually see 56% higher brand awareness. And idea ads don't just inspire, they help your brand to stand out on Pinterest because that spark of inspiration turns into real results. When you scale your inspiring content to the 400 million month, uh, monthly doers and makers on Pinterest, or when you leverage our Pinterest trends, our insights and targeting to reach audiences that matter most to your brand, there are real results. We found that users who saw idea ads were 59% more likely to recall that brand. And of course, we're all about turning inspiration into action. Pinners come to Pinterest to try, learn, and buy, and idea ads make it easy for them to do that. You can add ingredient lists, step-by-step how-tos, or you can direct pinners to your destination URL to help, to help them turn inspiration to action. In fact, we found that idea ads have the highest click-through rate among video ad formats. Check out the example on the right here. We don't just show you a delicious lemon tart that you can double tap. We give you the instructions to make that tart right in the ad. And if you feel like it, you can follow the brand and the creator. Or if you want to learn more about the brand, you can visit the URL or bookmark the, the, the post for you to try later. So you might be wondering, how do idea ads fit into your broader Pinterest strategy, specifically into a multi-objective strategy? 
We recommend running idea ads as part of the build awareness and or drive consideration stages of the funnel. That way you can use this rich, immersive and inspiring ad format to target pinners early in their purchase journey. We found that multi-objective advertisers observed a 52% increase in unique reach when they were pairing awareness and consideration together. So now that you know what idea ads are, it's time to get ready to share your inspiration across Pinterest. I'm gonna kick it off to Amy and Leanne who are gonna show you how to get started with idea ads. Thanks Kat and hello, every hello again everyone. Um, I'm now going to take you through the ins and outs of the idea ads format. So you've probably realized that we've mentioned both idea pins and idea ads. So what's the difference? This is an idea pin. Idea pins went into GA last May and allow brands, creators, and users to share native content with their followers and those interested in their ideas. They're entirely organic, reaching audiences based on follows, user interaction, and tag topics. Idea ads, on the other hand, have paid media behind them. They're promoted by brands and have unique capabilities such as supporting outbound clicks, leveraging Pinterest trends, audience targeting, and more. Here's where you can find idea ads on the platform. Similar to our other ad formats, idea ads can be found in home and search feeds and related pin surfaces. As of June 1st, idea ads can be found in the watch tab, which is a new space on Pinterest entirely dedicated to full screen video. Now let's take a look at the user interface, or as we like to call it, anatomy of an idea ad. So in the bottom left corner, you have your brand attribution. This includes your brand name and logo along with promoted by language. Below that is your pin description and page count indicator. This shows people what page of the idea ad they're currently on. Now moving over to the lower right corner, you have your overflow menu at, top, at the top. It's user activated by clicking the ellipses and provides additional options like send or hide pin. Then you have your save button, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, as well as the details feature, which is user activated by clicking more in the pin description. This is essentially a blank space that you can use to show instructions, ingredients, material lists, and more. And since there's no character limit, you can add as much or as little as you want. And last but not least, the visit button which supports outbound clicks by driving users to your destination URL within an in-app experience. And here's where you can create idea ads on Pinterest. The first is our in-app creation tool. This is accessed by opening up the Pinterest ad, which I know all of you guys already have downloaded on your phone, and clicking the plus sign at the bottom of the screen. Or you can upload your content into ad managers ad manager via desktop. So now that we have the technical stuff out of the way, let's dig into actual content creation. There's four creative territories we are encouraging brands to tap into when making idea ad content. Process, personal, knowledge, and community. Let's unpack each of these by taking a look at some examples. Our first territory is process. This is an idea ad concept that provides detailed instructions and practical advice through a step-by-step -step process. In other words, this is where your how-to content lives, how to use, how to make, or how to plan. A new meal planning app could use idea ads to show people how to use their tech, or a hardware brand could show people how to plan a fun day in the sun with their family featuring kid-friendly gardening tools along the way. Our next creative territory is personal. This is an idea ad concept that humanizes your brand by offering a first person perspective from a brand ambassador. From a brand ambassador, creator, 
or customer or employee. This includes content such as make with me, personal growth stories, or a day in the life. An insurance brand could use idea ads to share a customer's story about how small business insurance helped her business through a tough time. Or a luggage brand could partner with a travel creator to share how their suitcases and accessories are built to withstand long trips. Next, we have knowledge. These are idea ad concepts that provide product facts and information or use cases. They highlight unique value propositions, provide product suggestions, clever hacks or tips involving your product. A beauty brand could use ideas to people how their vegan lipstick gets made. I learned through this that lipstick is not vegan. Or, and in the process, educate consumers on clean beauty. Or a health brand could demystify probiotics by providing product recommendations and usage tips. And finally, we have community. These are idea ad concepts that let your brand interact with a community of potential customers. These include Q and A's, challenges, contests, and exclusive access such as promo codes, first looks, or behind the scenes. A healthcare brand could partner with a creator to help answer frequently asked questions, or a household brand could invite people to take a pledge to use sustainable cleaning products. No matter what story you decide to tell, idea ads enable you to become the spark of inspiration for people looking to try, do, buy, and learn something new on Pinterest. And with that, I'll pass it over to Amy to share creative tips and guidelines. Awesome. Thanks so much, Leanne. So once you've decided the type of story you want to tell, you'll want to turn your focus to what you need to create an optimal viewing experience. So in other words, creative best practices or what we're calling our creative guidance to follow. And the first thing you'll want to consider is your safe zones. Ensure your content is visible by keeping elements such as text overlay, or brand logos within the designated safe zone. And if you're creating within the Pinterest app itself, the tool will automatically guide you, but you'll likely be creating idea ads in third-party apps like Photoshop or After Effects or even Canva, in which case you'll want to reference our safe zone specs. So on the right, you can see a little visualization here as well as our safe zones. You can see the little lines trigger where you may run into UI elements or even have your content cut off. So again, just be mindful of these safe zones. Next, we recommend that you start with video. And you might be asking yourselves why though. And since idea ads autoplay in grid, you'll create a more thumb stopping experience and really capture pinners attention by using video on your cover page. And I love this example from Sephora and Armani Beauty that actually shows the application of the foundation. And I can attest here, the foundation from Armani is really amazing, FYI, I'm wearing it today. But also it doesn't need to be all video throughout your idea ad. So feel free again to combine video, static images, text overlay, and even more to create a truly unique content experience. And one last reminder, each page of your idea ad can host video between two and 60 seconds in length. But again, just a reminder here to keep it succinct and to the point. Okay, so, so those are some of our most basic must-haves that we just went through. So now let's take a look at some of our pro tips. And we're starting off with introducing your idea with a title page. And that's because having a clear title on the first page previews the content to come for pinners, essentially giving them the payoff and an incentive to opt in and engage with that piece of content. So by adding a title page, I know exactly what I'm getting into, like these really fun and delicious pizza calzones from Pillsbury. Yeah. Okay, so next, let's take a look at the specs of an idea ad. A nine by 16 surface is a large, large space to utilize. 
So again, consider how you can layer assets to create dynamic visuals. Experiment with split screens, color blocking, or even unique camera angles. And this will make your content extra engaging for your audience. Very similar to this fabulous Lowe's example on the left-hand side. So again, TLDR here is get creative and think about how you can use other de design elements like bolding text, leveraging arrows, and so much more to help enhance or progress your story. Okay. We also highly recommend using text overlay and coming as a copywriter, I can tell you there are several benefits to using text overlay. First, it makes your content accessible in the browse tab where sound is typically off and the watch tab where sound is typically on. Second, it can influence user actions through language such as tap to explore or even provide more context on what each card is talking about. So for instance, I love this cheeky text overlay from Southwest Airlines talking about warm weather destinations that will help you thaw out during the winter and why they're perfect for you. Cool. So next you'll want to consider your page count. And since idea ads exist as a single or multiple pages, you'll want to ask yourself as a brand or agency if using them will advance your story or help pinners follow along. Some storytelling frameworks really naturally lend themselves to certain page counts. So for example, a time-lapse video makes the most sense as a single page, while a step-by-step -step idea ad works best as multiple pages so a user can toggle back and forth. Idea ads can host up to 20 pages of content, but just a note again, you might not need all 20. Don't stretch yourself. So really ensure that you're giving people all of the information you need, but again, being succinct and very compelling. Lastly here, think about how you can use that details feature that Leanne mentioned to provide even more additional context, color, or ingredients about your idea. Which also brings me to my next point, which is keep it moving. I was gonna make a, a move and move in joke, but I decided against it, I guess I did now. Um, but again, keep it moving and strong and seamless transitions, again, help reduce pin or drop off in the middle of your idea ad. So for example, I love this fun Boba Fett example from Lego, which helps users out by telling them what to do next by using directional graphics like arrows or even directional language like you see here, where it tells you to tap to reveal or see what's next. Next, timing and pacing is more than just the number of frames you're using to build your idea ad. As we probably know, quick, upbeat, and time-lapse pacing really grabs the attention of pinners and helps increase view-through rates, as you can see in this extremely beautiful idea ad from creator David Lopez and Victor Nolf. This creator here is being extremely strategic with their timing and pacing, helping show multiple steps of their epic going outlook. And it's really, really compelling as a pinner and a consumer. And not surprisingly, you'll want to make your content and idea ad very actionable. So tell pinners what to do next by adding a clear call to action at the end of your idea ad or point them to the visit button below. I love this example from Pillsbury as it makes it extremely easy to understand the entire message and find the recipe on the site. It looks delicious too. And like we mentioned throughout this entire session and webinar, don't forget the details. And this feature provides extra space for you to dig into further so you can dedicate your visual content to the most important aspects of your idea. Here, you can provide copy and keywords that help index your content and feature it in search. So, this Betty Crocker example really is doubling down on the actual recipe and the details, infusing amazing and thoughtful keywords like cookies, chocolate chips, and even their brand name, so it helps in search functionality. And lastly, consider using voiceover or music to elevate your content and make it even more engaging, as we know. Idea ads are the perfect surface for storytelling after all. 
And all brands have access to the in-app Pinterest music library, where you can access royalty-free music and sounds to give your content that extra oomph. Or you can always record or narrate your idea ad yourself to give your content even more personality and a human touch. All right, that was a lot and we're not done. So those were just some of the creative principles when building idea ads. Now let's talk about adapting your vertical video. And this is something I'm really passionate about. Vertical video is a new content format across all major platforms as we know. And for advertisers and agencies, this means an additional ad format that really requires that strategic reformatting of assets across multiple platforms. So whether you're not scoped or maybe need to pivot or simply just need to do more with less, how many times have we heard that? Adapting your vertical video content for Pinterest can help you maintain velocity, maximize your wonderful assets, and again, expand your reach. So let's show how this can be done. At a high level here, here's some just must-haves when thinking about adapting your vertical video or creative assets in general for Pinterest. So first and foremost, removing the watermark from other platforms will help avoid auction deprioritization and make it feel just more crafted and authentic for Pinterest. And like we mentioned before, be conscious of those safe zones. Ensure the icon and brand attribution elements really don't interfere with your content. Next, use high-res video uh, to make the most of your format for just even a better visual storytelling experience. High resolution is the way to go. You'll also want to set expectations on what the pinner will be watching. So like we mentioned throughout this session, use a cover page and provide content context on what the pinner will actually be viewing when they click into your idea ad. Next, plan for sound off and sound on by leveraging text overlay. Add context to those images or videos with text overlay adapted from your website or even other content from parody platforms. And lastly, make it easy for people to go back and forth by breaking up video into pages, using approved music, like we mentioned, that's royalty free, or even including voiceover for, again, like I mentioned, that human flair. And so now, because we are, again, a show versus tell platform here at Pinterest, we really want to show one of these vertical video adaptions in action. So let's take a look. Okay, so here's an example from Pillsbury and how this can come to life visually. This delicious crescent roll video was shot from an aerial perspective and it looks absolutely delicious in my opinion and something I need to make as soon as possible. I need to have friends over. So Leanne and Kat, you need to come over. Um, but really taking a look and a deeper dive into how Pillsbury is adapting their content for Pinterest. This works well for other pl parody platforms, but keep in mind, pinners are coming to the platform for utility. So with that being said, Pillsbury really just slightly adapted this vertical video for Pinterest. And how do they do it? They creatively went ahead and added details like instructions and ingredients, a unique border on both sides of the video to show off the video even more, and added a call to action at the end to even try the recipe. By leveraging and adding those simple tweaks, this makes this content perfectly poised for Pinterest allowing this creative on the right to stand out to its fullest potential. And a note to all of the creative agencies and brands on the call today, we're always looking for unique and creative ways you are adapting your content for Pinterest. So if inclined, we'd love to see those examples from you. Uh, you can always email us at amy at pinterest.com. So we know that was a lot. And now I'm going to hand it back to Kat to wrap it up with some important key takeaways. Over to you, Kat. Well, I'm, I'm also equally hungry uh, from seeing that Pillsbury video. Um, okay, so let's summarize what we talked about today. Um, firstly, idea ads spark inspiration and deliver results. We talked about how ideas are built for inspiring, immersive storytelling with all the information and inspiration needed to take action. 
We've seen that this format is an excellent way to target pinners early in their journey to help them build awareness or drive consideration. Secondly, like Amy and Leanne talked about, with this new format, it's a great way to embrace storytelling, to capture attention and build engagement. Try creating clear and focused narratives that grab attention quickly and maintain viewership. And then lastly, we just talked about how to optimize your content for Pinterest. If you have a video asset that you're using, you can adapt that video for Pinterest by adding elements such as text overlay, CTAs, our royalty-free music, uh, you know, details, and lots more to make your content even more engaging. So we wanted to make sure that we allocated lots of time for questions. So we'll take, um, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes of questions, and then we'd love to give everyone some time back. But if you're interested in getting inspired, you can actually open up the app right now, uh, tap the search bar, and then tap the camera icon on the search bar. And if you scan this uh, Pinterest pin code on the right, you'll actually be brought to our creative strategy board where they have all this amazing creative inspiration. And if you don't yet have the Pinterest app, here's a great time to do that. Download it, try it out, um, and it's a great way to get inspired. And while folks are doing that, I'm going to start uh, answering some questions. Um, I'll order them based off of the most upvotes, and we'll see how far we get. All right. Okay, so the question with the most upvotes is a text overlay on the photo a best practice, or would ad performance typically typically be better without any added elements? So, like we talked about, we've actually seen a lot of success with uh, with text elements, text overlays. Um, like we talked about, pinners come with really a very specific utility, and so the more that you can help guide them uh, in their viewing experience, the better the results we've seen. All right, next question. Will we be able to tag products on desktop? Um, uh, so in terms of tagging products, product tagging is not currently available on um, the ad format right now. Um, and product tagging is exclusively available only on idea pins. So the non-promoted version uh, available in the US and the UK right now. Do idea ads need to be posted organically as idea pins first before boosting, or are they dark only? Uh, well, you could post it as uh, onto your private board, uh, and then it wouldn't be largely seen by audiences. If that's a concern for you, you don't want to have the organic content live on your board. Um, or you could post it organically uh, and then promote it. There's actually a lot of value in posting it organically. Um, it's a great way for pinners to come back to your content, see the rest of your content on your board, uh, get to know your brand more. Um, and we also just know that content on Pinterest lives a lot longer. It's really much more evergreen. So there's a lot of benefits in having it uh, live organically rather than just dark only. All right, can visitors pin the idea ads to their own boards? Um, they can save, I think the question here is if they can save uh, the idea ad, and in which case, yes, there is save functionality. Can I turn already pinned idea pins into ads? Uh, yes, if you've created an idea pin already, you can definitely promote it as an ad. Um, we do have some content on our help center around which types of idea pins are promotable. So sometimes if you have certain features uh, included, on your idea pin, it may not be eligible for promotion, but the majority of idea pins are available for promotion. So definitely recommend doing that. Uh, will images still get the same amount of traction as these new videos? It looked like most of everyone's inspo was images. Yeah, so we actually have seen that um, during a beta, a beta, we had really a mix of video and images from our, our beta advertisers. Um, we did see stronger results with video and specifically video as the cover page, but that's not to say that um, static images won't do well. Pinners also really appreciate static images. So, um, you know, I think take the best practices and test and try them out, but, um, you know, you know your audience best and you know what really resonates with them. So definitely recommend testing and seeing what works for your audience. Um, do you have data regarding the optimum number of pages? Yes, we do. Um, in our creative best practices, we actually have like an even more, I know we covered a lot here, but we have even more robust creative best practices that the team has built. And so we found that idea ads that had 
um, three or less page, uh, pages performed best. Um, when you are starting out, should you focus on idea ads or classical pin ads? Well, I think, um, you know, idea ads are one that we continue to see a lot of value from. But uh, one thing I would say is that there's a lot of value in also using these different formats together, learning about um, how they can complement one another. Um, you know, you could, for example, you know, create an, uh, a, a classic pin, a standard pin, promote that and then have an idea ad that could be more for storytelling and more for how to or um, step by step. So I, I would say that they really do complement each other and not so much replace one or the other. Um, are hashtags out from recommended best practices? Um, I don't know, Amy, if you want to take that one. Yeah, um, thanks, Kat. So I would recommend, you know, hashtags really aren't a prevalent thing on Pinterest. So I would recommend if they're part of your larger campaign kind of like strategy or a part of a campaign message, include them, but they're not going to really drive anywhere. So I would say stay away from hashtags just because it's not really an authentic kind of uh, functionality or feature on Pinterest. All right, next one. Um, are idea pins going to have outbound links in the future without having to pay for ads? Uh, so as it stands right now, idea pins do not have outbound links. Um, it may be something that we are exploring or testing in the near future, um, but can't give any dates as to right now when we're looking at that. So uh, exclusively offered for idea or for ads at the moment. Um, okay, Ali asked, how do you build idea ads? What are best practices for success? Uh, in terms of building them, um, so Leanne walked through, there's a couple options in terms of actually building the content. You could build it through mobile and through the native publishing tools that we have, um, or you could actually build the ad directly from ads manager from start to finish, upload your content uh, directly there. And then in terms of best practices for success, um, uh, Amy, do you want to highlight maybe some of like your highlight reel of best practices to call out? Yeah, absolutely. And Leanne, feel free to interject here too. But I think, you know, in terms of best practices or creative guidance, we really think you need to start with video. And if you don't have video, you can always stitch together still images as well. And then also setting context with a title page and really introducing the amazing and rich idea that you're visualizing or sharing in an idea ad. So I'd say those are my biggest takeaways is starting with video and introducing your idea. And if you do have a multiple pages, include text overlay or even voiceover to add just a bit more context to your idea. Love that. Okay. Um, so we're going to take maybe like five more minutes of questions here. Um, since video seems to be getting pushed on every platform, will image ads become less valuable for us? Um, so no, I, I think that video and image um, really have unique places on Pinterest. Um, we have seen some success here with video and especially video as the cover uh, page for an idea ad. But we know that a lot of content still on Pinterest is a static image and that does really well. Um, I think really like the main thing you wanna keep in mind is the utility of your content um, and really how pinners will value that and the type of information you're giving them. So, um, you know, video continues to be something that pinners do enjoy and like to see, especially with idea ads. But um, again, you know your audience and, uh, you know, static image content still has a great place on Pinterest. All right, if I'm giving all of the info right uh, there on the idea pin and can't post an outbound link without an ad, how does that benefit us as business owners who use social media to drive traffic to our site? Um, so I think what's important here is that, uh, oh, I think that disappeared. Um, you can still post really valuable content on Pinterest in that way where you, know, you can leverage uh, details where you can talk about the type of content you have on your social, you can um, really build your presence on Pinterest um, and continue to build not just on other platforms, but your presence on Pinterest in a very unique way and drive that audience there. So um, I would say that Pinterest can continue to build your overall profile across multiple platforms. 
Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to always link out to that content. It's a great way to just build your presence additionally on Pinterest. And then Kat, one thing that I will say too yeah. is for an idea pin, you can also tag your products. So if you have products um, or a profile, you can always tag those to, to drive brand awareness and engagement and equity too. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Okay, for idea ads, will all texts even created outside the app be searchable for SEO? Um, so the, the text, uh, like we talked about, the text within details, your description, um, any keywords that you add on um, will be used to index your content and to help to improve, uh, you know, the search for your um, content. But I content uh, outside of the app, um, I don't think if you had like text outside of the app that would have any impact. So it would be all of your text that you're using within the actual idea, whether it's the description, the details, uh, the, the name of your idea, any of those things will help to index your search. Um, is the billable metric only on the first tile, i.e. if we are starting with a video but have images following, can we bid on CPV or CPM due to mixed media? Um, so it, it is considered overall as one single asset. It's not, um, you're not bidding on per card. So um, you unfortunately not would be, you would not be able to bill, have a billable metric on each page. It's just overall on the idea ad. All right, I'm gonna take maybe two more questions. Um, do the copy and the keywords in the detail section also have an impact for organic idea pins and search? Yeah, so like we talked about, those things help uh, index your search and help you to make sure that your content is even more relevant. So like the example with the Pillsbury chocolate chip cookies, if you wanna show up when people are searching for chocolate chip cookies, you title it that, if you feature that in the details, that can all help to improve your organic search. Um, okay, is to be most effective, is there a frequency to posting idea ads every day, once a week? Um, so as of right now, we don't actually have frequency recommendations uh, based off of our beta. Um, so since this is a new format, we're still developing some of those best practices. So we don't yet quite have an answer. Um, but I think one really great practice that I've seen is brands that post regularly with idea pin content. Um, throughout the week, maybe a few times a week, and then they actually see which ones are performing the best organically, and then they promote that one. So that was a really interesting tactic that I saw some brands doing, and I think could be something that could be leveraged. Uh, but again, we don't yet have um, official recommendations on this. Okay, we're at 1040, or we're at a, the 45 mark. Um, I want to make sure we give folks time back, which was our goal. And I know we have tons of questions, which we can make sure we answer offline. Um, so I think with that, we will um, end our session today. But I really wanted to say thank you all so much. You had such great questions. You were super engaged. We had such amazing representation from all over the world, which is so fantastic. Um, so I just want to say thank you. And I'll let Amy and Leanne also say thanks as well. And then we'll end it. I've never seen a chat more engaged. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Love all the questions. Yeah, thanks everyone. Okay.